What's up? It's your boy, yours truly, Carcino here. Can I tell you guys right now? This is it. <laughs> this is the movie review of all movie reviews. This is the Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. This is what you waited for. This is why you didn't spend your money on Valentine's Day. You wanted to see what was going to happen. Who was going to win. Now, going into this film, my expectations were very low. Why? Because I've seen most of the trailers and I felt the trailers are showing far too much. And I always get nervous when a, me a mega movie such as this get moved. This movie was supposed to come out a year ago. Then it got moved to 2016. Then it got bumped up for earlier release. It was supposed to get released later because I think the studios knew this movie just might not be able to contend with other releases that are coming out. So they're jockeying for a position where they can have a good month to come out with their movie and I think it showed uh, Zack Snyder great visual effects guy visual shots like he did in Man of Steel a lot of great visual effects and shots but here's what the situation is as this movie starts it's a continuation basically from Man of Steel where Bruce Wayne just happened to be in Metropolis because Wayne Tower is down there and all these buildings are falling and he it's kind of like the commercial you saw right so he's downtown while all of this is going down with this massive fight is happening between Superman and Zod so after all of this is done there's this trial to see if Superman is going to be held responsible for this. Should he be here? Should we allow him to live on our planet? Like there's actually a meeting to discuss this. As if they can make him leave. If he, <laughs> if he, <laughs> if he decided, if they decided he didn't want to be here. So, But anyway, it had substance. It had a good storyline. And from what they were developing from there was given a foundation as to why Batman has so much disdain for Superman. Because a lot of people died when those buildings were falling. And all that destruction and Batman sees him as an immediate threat. Like look, this guy is dangerous. This guy here can burn the whole place down. And he was great. Everybody was worried about Ben Affleck. I wasn't. I knew Ben Affleck could deliver the tone of a Batman that they needed for this film. You don't need the fun Batman. This is not a fun Batman at all. This is a, 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 a shattered, hurt Batman. He has suffered loss greatly. He's hurt by that and he feels responsible. And Whenever someone feels like that they go dark. So he was the returning Dark Knight. And when he returned, I mean, remember Batman's moral code? Yeah, well, that just doesn't exist in this movie. Which is going to drive comic book fans a little crazy because they never explain why, like, that is. They're like, well, why didn't they do that? That doesn't make any sense. And then something happened. The story kind of shifts into this, to this like all action scenes, where you could tell that they shot these scenes, and that was what they cared about right away. The story is what they developed later, and tried to work around it, which they had a good storyline going. But the problem is, it's so much that they trying to get message, like this one that email. If they sent to Lois, that could that be even more retarded and unnecessary? It's like, look, you don't have to plug a Justice League movie. 
we we already know Justice League is coming. So it doesn't need to really be plugged as much. Batman's investigating these... I, I'm not going to spoil the movie, but maybe characters that may be in the Justice League, maybe. And he's got all these cool gadgets. Jeremy Irons is great as as um, Alfred. And this felt like Superman being implanted in a Batman movie. Because it's dark. And it's going to be boring for kids at first. Kids for the first hour are going to be like bored. Because the movie is so long. And you feel it. Because it's so in, in the beginning it's so layered with all this story. Just like the dialogue you see with, with Kent. Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne. Like it's great dialogue for us. It could have been shorter. But the dialogue scene was wonderful. The way they set it up. So when that dialogue scene happens, you're saying to yourself, oh man, this is going to be great, but, but now you're going to say, I've seen it already, now i got to see it play out again, and it was kind of long the first time, and here it is long again. And then Jesse Eisenberg, who doesn't watch his performances, and there's a good reason for that, and he's, he plays the same character in everything he does. There's no differential in range. He's the pedantic character, and to see him bring that pedantic character to Lex Luthor and to make Lex that way, uh, basically a psychotic man who's just out of control, that's not Lex Luthor that we are known to see him. So the fans are really going to be turned off when they see that type of Lex Luthor portrayed, you know. Lex is always like in control even when he's around the most dangerous and strongest individual in the world in Superman he knows Superman is going to be grounded by rules and code so he's always relaxed he's always complex he's always confident this is a, a more I'm like they need to get him a Xanax or something I don't know what's going on with Lex Luthor here this is just not him and then uh, certain scenes that you saw, of course, in the trailers they show you are dream sequences. You know, so be, you'll be prepared for that. Some of it are not real. But I, I'm purposely leaving things out because, you know, I don't want to... This is spoiler free. I'm not spoiling anything. Um, there's a couple surprises. It's not real surprises, but you might find it enjoyable now Lois Lane to me people were, oh she was outstanding wasn't she um what Lois Lane she was not even relevant I mean it's like they they put her in the movie because like well we gotta have Lois Lane in there in Superman but we gotta have Lois Lane she had basically the Superman 3 Lois Lane role we need you to go all the way over there in that long dark corner and don't come out of that corner until we ask for you. Yeah, uh, why don't you take this, this, um, this one piece that we need, and we need you to take this and go all the way over town. And then, oh my God, now she's uh, she's trapped. She needs to be rescued. It was just so. It's like she had two days or a week of shooting to do. Her involvement in the movie was so meaningless. It was like, what is she here for? She didn't even need to be, Amy Adams did not need to be in this film. And people who think they're going to see, it's about as much as you see Wonder Woman in the trailer, is about as much as you're going to see Wonder Woman in the movie. I mean, really, she's not there very long. And you know pretty much what's going to happen. You know, you see Doomsday, and you, the way you weren't impressed when you saw him, and they say, well, maybe when the movie come out, he'll look more impressive. Eh, it's the same. You know the scene. I mean, you've seen it before. And the only thing that's cool is the Batman 
versus Superman fight, which seems to be the catalyst for the entire film, is what they built around, and it was done well. The fight scene was done well, and the action scenes, they were done well. So with that being said and done, that was the bright shining light of the movie. But you wait so long for something really to get your attention that this movie is really dark. So for kids, I don't see how kids are going to be even excited until this going on and then the, the dream sequence with Batman and then the, the real scene with Batman is about the same. <laughs> Like, 50 cow bullets flying around, you know, you when it get to the 50 cow scene, you're going to see people like, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on here? But, um, Zack Snyder completely cannot grasp story and shoot it well and edit it well. He cannot blend story and action together. He is Michael Bay's twin like he if they go to earth 2 he's Michael Bay they was doing the multi-universe thing so in earth 1 Zack Snyder is definitely Michael Bay he has went to that film school of explosions and more explosions because that's what buys us the tickets we, we gotta blow that up not the garbage can, the entire store. Why not the store? Why not the block? The block blowing up. Wow, it's amazing. Never thought about blowing up the whole block. Let's do it. Get more explosives. <laughs> that Michael Bay uh, way of directing is, um, yeah, it works in certain films, and certain films, it does not as we saw in Transformers. So this is basically Transformers <laughs> all over again. Um, I give Man of Steel though uh, out of four stars, two and a half. You enjoy the action scenes. It's, a, it's an okay movie to watch. Uh, kids won't enjoy it as much, but it's an okay movie. You know, it's not gonna, it's entertaining when you see it, but it's not something that you're going to take to a keepsake and be like, oh my gosh, i got to go back to see that. You might go back and see it once, you know, at a matinee price, or you, you, could, you could wait for DVD, you know. But other than that, that's, it's not Deadpool <laughs> or anything like that. It's not on the level of Avengers at all. This is a mess. And if they move forward with Justice League, if they're going to stick with Zack Snyder, uh, he better have some consulting going on because this film here is something to worry about. <laughs>